exactly circular, of course. But that means that the cheek that is away from the light form is going to be darker than the cheek that is directly facing the light. Um, even if they were both in the light, but because that plane is a different angle and it's turning away from the light, it's going to be darker. Let's get into the ebosh stage of the painting. Now the ebosh, and it can it can be a difficult thing to hold back on because if done properly, it's not refined, it's not beautiful. But I've found that my painting time is much more efficient, much faster if I do a rough and maybe even a little bit ugly underpainting. I didn't love the way that it fit her, so I made some adjustments. So you can see as we transition from the original photo to the composite, some of the adjustments that were made. Um, I also made some small changes to her expression. So you're gonna see, we'll go back and forth between the reference. So you can see from the abosh, you can look at those fingers and see I was aiming for the planes. Um, very rough, but trying to keep them fairly faceted. And now as I go in, I'll refine the values, push the darkest darks, and eventually the highlights will go in. I often will try and paint from back to front. I don't follow that rule steadfastly, but I find it's useful on things like this cloth where I want to have this translucent effect store near you. They'll probably carry something like that. A little glaze in here, adding a little bit of um, the rosy color into the clouds. It's cool to see how it transforms the whole area like that. 